I am very lucky. I get to travel quite a lot around the world and, and teach MMA type seminars and classes. And it's a very common question. What made Connor different than everybody else? It's of course a few things, but one big thing he did. Hey, what's up? So look, I recently had the chance to talk to John Kavanaugh, who is of course Conor McGregor's longtime coach. And I got to chat for about 80 minutes, ask him all about mindset, habits, what makes someone like Conor McGregor such a successful champion? How can others build those same skills? So check out my favorite part of this interview and see what you think. All right, John, so I'm really curious what you think about developing a world-class mindset. So what's the difference between a guy like Conor who developed themselves into the world's top paid athlete and the others you've worked with have done super well also versus the guy who had the potential or the woman who had the potential but never quite made it. They just fell off. They never got that big end result. So uh, I, I did some with uh, with Joe Wicks. He, I don't know if you, you guys know him. He's a pretty well-known fitness coach in the UK. And we spoke about this and we agreed on the on the uh, description of, of stick to And that's the ability to show up and just put it in achieve your 24-hour goals every day for the weeks, months, and years required to build up the requisite skill level in order to compete at a world-class stage. Because I'm often asked, well, did you, when Connor walked in day one, did you know? No, I didn't. Because I've had a lot of guys come in that were very good on the first day, even for the first week. But as muscle soreness comes in and boredom and fatigue and distractions come in, they might drift away after a couple of weeks or after a couple of months, and they're never going to get to a world-class level. This is, again, coming back to this idea of figure out the cost and decide whether or not you're willing to pay it. If one of you guys wants to be a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu or a, be able to compete in MMA at a high level, the cost is 10 years of daily training. That's the cost. Are you willing to pay it? That's up to you. There'll be other costs as well. You're going to have a lot of physio and a couple of surgeries. They're, they're just unavoidable in a, in a tough uh, combat contact sport. So with Connor, I'll, I will say another thing he does exceptionally well. So I am very lucky. I get to travel quite a lot around the world and, and teach MMA type seminars and classes. And it's a very common question. What made Connor different than everybody else? It's, of course, a few things, but one big thing he did. Let's say I'm shown demonstrating a technique, and I say, okay, guys, now grab a partner there, and you drill the technique for two minutes, and your partner drills the technique. Invariably, what will happen is you go off. Some people might have a little conversation. Hey, Rob, what's up? What, what you go up to the weekend? And, you know, you, you, your mind drifts. Every drill I did with Connor, every second of that drill, he was in the T-Mobile arena, and he was facing the world number one, and he was fighting for the world title. And he was able to put himself in that mindset from day one with every lesson we did. And I thought that level of, uh, I will almost say that requires a level of imaginative endurance that's very hard to replicate. Yes, you might do that for a couple of drills and you might do that for a couple of days per month. He had the ability to do that for every drill, every day, every week, every month. So whatever task he is doing, he's able to really fully immerse himself in it. And that's kind of getting back to that idea of the 24 hour goals. It's not losing himself. Oh, well, my title fight is six months away. So some of the sessions be good. Some of the sessions be bad. It was no. Today, this session is the last session of my life before I fight the world champion. So I better in every second, every moment be fully in it, see my training partner as being the best opposition that I'm ever going to face and give full effort on the skill acquisition part of the training that we're doing. So for me, that's that, that they, they'd be two, two topics that I don't hear spoken about a huge amount in developing a world-class mindset in, in terms of sport. I imagine it will have huge crossover for business as well. We can see how well he's done in, in, in other areas of his business. And I've been on calls with him. I've seen him in boardrooms and he has that same approach um, to no matter what he's doing. So yeah. Keep, keep, keep in mind what you're trying to achieve. Have your 24-hour goals fully present in anything you're doing. And don't be afraid of embarrassment. Don't be afraid of putting your hand up and saying, I don't know what I'm doing in this particular area. Embarrassment is the price of mastery. Don't be afraid of that. Dive into it. All right, great. I love that advice. So along with that, I'm really interested in how you learn because being an MMA coach, I would imagine you learn really well physically. So when it comes to the mental skills, especially the skills you use to grow your own business, like selling, Putting these pictures. Guys, all the, yeah, I, I say one quick thing here yeah, yeah, because uh, I was flicking around your website and I think your approach is 
is absolute genius, right? I love what you do. And we would call that MMA skill stacking, right? Now, what I mean by that is, let's say you want to go into mixed martial arts, a blend of the combat sports, but you're only going to train boxing. You're the Tyson Fury of boxing. You're hyper good. You're in the top, top 0.001% of people who ever did boxing in the world. You're going to get nowhere in mixed martial arts. You'll get drowned by the other systems that are required to compete well in MMA. And what I read on your website was, we're going to teach you this skill, but you're not going to focus only on that. We're going to teach you sales. You're not a salesperson. Teach you marketing. You're not a marketer. Teach you web design. You're not a web designer. I was like, that's exactly what I try and do in fighting. I try and get my guys good at a broad range of skills so that they can use them in any area. And it's something I've tried to do as well with myself that I'm not the best communicator in the world, but I'm pretty good. I'm not the best mixed martial arts coach in the world. I'm pretty good. I'm not the best at networking. I'm pretty decent. I'm not the best at this. I'm pretty. So I've got good at a broad range of topics rather than try. I think it's a, a very bad lifestyle approach. Let's say an approach to success in life to get, I, I'll use a silly example. Some people put their whole life in throwing the javelin. That's it. One skill, throwing a pointy stick as far as they can. And if they miss out their spot in the Olympics, you might have to wait four more years. That's a terrible approach to try and to be successful in life you'd be much better trying to get good at 10 different topics than be the best in the world at one topic which is incredibly difficult to do so when i was reading around on the website i was like that's exactly what we do so we're we're, we're coming from the same uh, same approach